Good morning. Today's lesson we'll be talking about the subjects in the Old Testament, which is divided into four divisions. The first one is the book of law, the books of history, the book of poetry, and the books of prophecy. We'll begin. The first book is the book of law. The first five books of the Bible are sometimes called the Pentateuch, which means five books. They are also known as the books of the law because they contain the laws and instruction given by the Lord through Moses to the people of Israel. These books were written by Moses except for the last portion of Deuteronomy because it tells about the death of Moses. These five books lay the foundation of the coming of Christ and that here God chooses and brings into being the nation of Israel. These books narrate the origins of universe, the earth, and mankind, as well as the birth of the nation of Israel. As God's chosen people, Israel became the custodians of the Old Testament, the recipients of the covenants of promise, and the channel of Messiah. Three of these books, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, lay out a series of civil, religious, and ethical laws by which the nation of Israel is to be governed. The civil laws were what we think of when we think law. Some of their civil laws covered the same things as ours do, like murder and stealing. But some covered other things, like what to do if you accidentally killed your neighbor's donkey. And the punishments were different. Today, we would send some people to jail. The Israelites would have to have to pay back what they stole or destroyed, or sometimes endure physical punishment. There are many of their civil laws that we don't have to follow because we have a different country and a different government. The ceremonial laws were used to tell the Israelites how to worship God. There were a lot of them. They explained who should take care of the tabernacle or temple, how to give sacrifices and when, and what feasts were for, and even what the people were allowed to eat. We don't follow these laws because we are part of the church and not Judaism. The moral laws we do need to follow, sort of. Moral laws define what is right and wrong. They include the Ten Commandments, and how exactly to treat others. The difference is where the Israelites were given very specific rules. Jesus tells us to be kind, to love others, and to love and respect God. Now, let's look at these five books of law. The first one is Genesis. Genesis is the only book that tells all story. It covers creation, Adam and Eve, Noah, the Tower of Babel, Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, Esau, and Jacob, Joseph, and the move to Egypt. That's Genesis. Next is Exodus. Exodus means leave. The book covers Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt to Mount Sinai, the law, and building the Ark of the Covenant, the tabernacle, and the tabernacle equipment. That's Exodus. Next is Leviticus. Leviticus means book of the Levites. The Levites were the tribe that took care of the tabernacle and temple and included the priests. This book is filled with details on how the people of God should live, eat, sacrifice, celebrate, and more. Most of Leviticus deals with the ceremonial law, which the Levites would have been in charge of. You could sum up the book of Leviticus with God's repeated command. Be holy as I am holy. Next, Numbers. The book is called Numbers because it starts with the census of each tribe. The book mixes up more laws with the story of Israel's wandering through the wilderness en route to the promised land of Canaan. And that's Numbers. Next, Deuteronomy. Israel is about to finally enter the promised land of Canaan. Before they do, Moses rallies the people to remind them of God's laws and how what they should do to obey them. This is how the book of Deuteronomy gets its name. 
It is the second giving of God's law. All five books are attributed to Moses, although Joshua probably wrote the account of Moses' death. These are the books of law. The next division were the books of history. There are 12 of them. The 12 books deal with the history of the nation of Israel. These books cover the life of the nation from their possession of the land down to two deportations and the loss of land because of unbelief and disobedience, covering about 800 years of Israel's history. These 12 books tell about the conquering and possession of Canaan, the regions of the judges, the establishments of kings, which were Saul, David, and Solomon, the divisions of Israel into the northern and southern kingdom, the fall of the northern kingdom to Assyria, the exile of the southern kingdom into Babylon, and the return of Jerusalem under the leadership of men like Nehemiah and Ezra. Let's look at the books of history. The first one is Joshua. Joshua is a story of how Israel moved into the promised land of Canaan. It details the battles and treaties between Israel and the native Canaanites, and then tells us how the tribes of Israel delivered up, divvied up the land. The author was Joshua. The next one is Judges. Judges is the account of how Israel behaves be between the death of Joshua and the leadership of a king. Instead of remaining loyal to God and following his laws, this generation of Israelites wanders in their faith, worshiping idols and indulging in gratuitous violence. The author was Samuel. The next book is Ruth. A short story set during the time of Judges about a woman from Moab who remains faithful to her Israelite mother-in-law after the deaths of their husbands. Ruth's theme confirms that even in dark times, if people live to please God and not themselves, they will experience God's love and protection. Ruth, her mother-in-law, Naomi, and marriage to Boaz demonstrate the importance of relationship and faithfulness. The author is Samuel. The next one is First and Second Samuel. Samuel marks a great turning point in Israel's history. Israel transitions from being ruled by priests and judges to kings. After Israel's leaders wandered away from God's laws, God allowed a new form of leadership. Saul was placed as the first appointed king of Israel. After Saul's overstepped his rule, role, God, David was appointed as king, and a record of his reign appears in 2 Samuel, the authors of Samuel and Nathan, 1 and 2 Kings. The book of Kings shows us how faithful God is to his people. We see the full spectrum of God's dealings with Israel from extreme blessings under Solomon to utter desolation and captivity for the divided kingdom. These books introduce the stories of Solomon, Elijah, Elisha, Ahab, and the evil Jezebel. The author was Jeremiah. First and Second Chronicles recount the history of Israel, Solomon, the details of building of the temple, Israel splitting into and the exile of Judea into Babylon slavery. The author was Ezra. Ezra. Ezra records the decree of Cyrus that allowed the Jews to return and then list the families who did return. The temple is rebuilt and Jerusalem experiences a spiritual and moral revival. The author is Ezra. Nehemiah. With Nehemiah's encouragement, the people of Jerusalem rebuilt the wall around Jerusalem. Read the law, repent, and renew their commitment to God. The book ends with administrative details and enforcements of the law. The author was Ezra. And lastly, Esther. Esther is a short story which includes courage, faith, betrayal, politics, and plots of genocide. Esther is a Jewish girl still living in exile 
who is chosen by King Ashurus to be his wife. God leads her to use her position to save the Jews. The author is unknown. These are the books of history. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, the books of history. Next, we'll be talking about the books of poetry. These books relate to Israel's spiritual life. It explores questions of suffering, love, wisdom, and the nature of God of Israel. These five books have to do with the human heart. They portray real human experience and grapple with profound problems. They concern themselves with the experiences of the godly. The first book, Job. This book is named for a righteous and faithful man who was challenged to remain faithful through the loss of everything in his life his children, home, and friends. However, in the end, and by remaining steadfast, God rewards Job by not only replacing all he lost, but multiplying it as well. Job was blessed with his flocks increased to the thousands. He was granted seven more sons and three of the most beautiful daughters in the land. Job lived to see his grandchildren to the fourth generation. He died old and full of years. The author is unknown. The next book, Psalms. The book of Psalms is a collection of petitions, prayers, songs, and beautiful poetry. Here we see prayerful songs and poetry describing almost every facet of man's relation to God in times of trials and the returning words of a loving God. King David is recognized to be the psalmist of much of this book. Next, Proverbs. Proverbs is again a collection which passes on words of knowledge and experiences God has for us today. Though short and concise, most Proverbs offer sound advice and that covers a wide range of topics. They include messages of chastity, controlling our tongues, drinking too much wine, the love of money, having true wisdom, and many more. Proverbs was written by Solomon. Next, Ecclesiastics, meaning assembly of the church. It deals with vanity and shows that fullness of life is found only in God. This book addresses the often asked question on the meaning of life. It illustrates that faith and patience are keys to enjoying the victorious life God has for us. The author was Solomon. And last, the Song of Solomon. This theme is one of beautiful love. The compilation of songs is of marriage, purity, and morality. This book is a symbolic parallel to our relationship as pure and righteous people, the bride of Christ, with our groom, the Messiah, the Christ. Written as a love poem, Songs of Solomon's imagery demonstrates flawlessly God's love for Israel and Christ's love for his believers. This book takes us from falling in love to uniting in love to struggling in love and to finally maturing in love. The author is Solomon. These books are the books of poetry. Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. The last division is the books of prophecy. There are 17 books of prophecy in the Old Testament, and they are divided into two groups. The long books are the major prophets, and the short books, the minor prophets. According to the Bible, a true prophet was called and equipped by God, empowered by the Holy Spirit to perform his job, to speak God's message to specific people and cultures in specific situations comfort people with sin, warn of coming judgment, and the consequences if people refuse to repent and obey. Prophets also brought a message of hope and future blessings for those who walk in obedience. 
the first prophets were the major prophets. There are five of them. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Isaiah, called the prince of prophets. Isaiah confronted a false prophet and predicted the coming of Jesus Christ, who will save people from their sins. Next, Jeremiah. Jeremiah preached throughout Israel, and his famous and is famous for his efforts to reform adulterous practices in Judea. He is the author of the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations. Lamentations, a despairing point about the destruction of Jerusalem. Ezekiel. Ezekiel is known for prophesizing the destruction of Jerusalem and the eventual restoration of the land of Israel. He shares unusual visions with people, reminding them the sin that led to their captivity, but also offering hope of national restoration. Daniel. Daniel was taken in captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and a symbol of steadfast faith in God, most famously demonstrated by the story of Daniel in the lion's den, when his faith saved him from a bloody death. The next the prophets we're going to talk about are the minor prophets. There are 12 of them. The first one, Hosea. Prophet's marriage to a prostitute reflects God's relationship with Israel. The next one, Joel. Talks about a locust picture that God's judgment of his sinful people, the nation of Judea. Amos. Amos preached in northern Israel on subjects of social injustice, condemning their idol worship persecution of God's prophets, and cheating of the poor. Obadiah, his theme is the destruction of the enemies of God's people. Eden will suffer for participating in Jerusalem's destruction. Jonah, typically prophets issued warnings or gave instructions to the people of Israel. Instead, God told Jonah to evangelize in the city of Nineveh home of Israel's cruelest enemy. However, he was reluctant and ran from God and was swallowed by a giant fish. Micah, Micah is known for predicting the destruction of Jerusalem and Samaria. Israel and Judea will suffer for their idolatry and injustice. Nahum, known for writing about the fall of the Assyrian Empire. Powerful, wicked Nineveh will fall before God's judgment. Habakkuk. Habakkuk records a dialogue between the prophet and God. Habakkuk, some of the same questions people are puzzled by today. Why do the wicked prosper and good people suffer? Why doesn't God stop the violence? Why doesn't God punish evil? The prophet gets specific answers from God. Trust God, even when he seems unresponsive and unfair. Zephaniah. This book warns about consequences of disobedience to God's will. A coming day of the Lord promises heavy judgment. Haggai commands the Jews to rebuild the temple in Judea. Zechariah. Jewish exiles should rebuild their temple and anticipate their Messiah. And lastly, Malachi. His primary theme is the justice and loyalty that God shows to mankind. The Jews have become careless in their attitudes toward God. This is the Minor Prophets. Today's lesson, we talked about the Old Testament divisions, the books of law, the books of history, the books of poetry, and the books of prophecy. Thank you very much for today's lesson.